Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. ESCOM warned of load shedding and higher diesel use when providing a winter system outlook this week. Terran Screamer joins me to discuss this and some of the other messages. Hi Terrence. Hi Chanel. Are we headed for a cold and dark winter? I think that's the underlying message uh, from ESCOM this week. You know that we've been averaging about 14,000 megawatts out over the summer period from January. <laughs> And we know we've had over 32 days of load shedding uh, since January, which is a, a really a big step up from last year. And uh, at times it's been at stage four, so fairly intensive load shedding. And we're entering into winter when the plants, they do less maintenance and the plant generally operates better. So it shouldn't be at that 14,000 type level of breakdowns. But if it is anywhere near that, so the stress test or the base case is that at 12,000 megawatts of breakdowns, which is very regular in our current uh, system, uh, we'll, we shouldn't have much load shedding. But as soon as we go above that level, so 1,500 megawatts above that level, or uh, get to, say, 15,000 megawatts of breakdowns, then the whole scenario changes. And we could have that sort of level, but it obviously won't be throughout winter. But if it were throughout winter, we have this thing of having possibly no load shedding at all at around 12,000 megawatts of breakdown to rising to over 100 days of load shedding, as we've heard previously. So we're in a precarious state. You know, there is a lot of work that you can see that's happening to try and uh, prepare for this winter. But I think that we must probably, as South Africans, prepare, not hopefully for the worst case scenario, but for a fairly difficult winter. What is the main reason for the precarious state of the system? Well, I think it really goes down to uh, this long protracted period of running the plants too hard for too long and not maintaining them at the, the, the level that they needed to be maintained. And Eskom outlined this week, they provide us benchmarks uh, glo against um, global utilities and versus what Eskom has done in terms of its energy utilization factor. You can see it's been running for multi years, if not decades above the global benchmark, so that means you're running harder um, and over a long period. And then you could see that over the uh, period we've also under-maintained. So even now that we're getting to a sort of 10% average maintenance level, uh, we're still not maintaining at the, at the sort of scale that we should to catch up the backlog, um, as well as to prepare to stabilize uh, the plant going forward. So. That's really, uh, it's sort of, uh, all this uh, is now caught up with Eskom and caught up with South Africa. And basically what really is needed is time and space to maintain the plants, but also to realize that these plants' energy, uh, energy availability factors, which now, I mean, this year, running at a sort of 55% level, these are really, really low levels, is probably never going to recover uh, across the system. Uh, across the coal system as we start, uh, as some of these units decommission themselves. And there's probably going to need to be a focus on those units that we can recover. So when we do raise the, the EAF, it will probably be off a smaller base. So it's, it's really, you know, what we know. The plants have been run too hard for too long and have been under maintained for various reasons. Um, but also, uh, and now basically it's, it's really biting. ESCOM is also relying heavily on its OCGT plants. Yes, th this is a scary figure, I think, in terms of how much ESCOM is having to spend on diesel every day, either to decrease the intensity of load shedding or to avoid load shedding. And we know this is happening at a time when diesel prices are really, really high at record levels. And the, the outlook for prices remains high for the rest of the year. It's be, been amplified by the Russia's invasion of Ukraine and what's happened in the energy markets generally. So Eskom's are really spending multiple billions of rands every year on diesel. And there's a concern that the, the, the high price of diesel, uh, which is used to produce coal by the coal miners in their, their yellow equipment or whatever equipment is used to produce coal and to transport it uh, by truck in more and more cases to the coal stations, together with what's going to have to be burnt both in Eskom's uh, Ankelich and Kariqua plants, as well as the private OCGT plants, 
to, to decrease the intensity of load shedding could add up to 20 billion to Eskom's costs this year. So it's, it's a very, very difficult position. Eskom, we know, uh, doesn't have the finances for this. And at some point, there's going to have to be some calculus as to whether you spend the money on the diesel to uh, decrease the load shedding intensity or just allow for load shedding. Just one, because we can't afford the diesel, but also there'll be periods where we can't supply enough diesel. The utility is also making increasingly assertive calls for additional capacity. Yes, we know that they've been calling for a number of years now for this gap of 4,000 to 6,000 megawatts to be closed. And we've, we haven't had any new procurement since 2014. We have had some additional renewables coming in from those projects that were procured in 2014. Since uh, 2018, they started to build those and those are now coming into commercial operation, but nothing else other than what people have done privately at their homes and at their factories to try to keep their lights on. And that's been fairly substantial. It seems there's been quite a lot of that investment is taking place. But at the large scale, very little has taken place. And uh, we see delays now in the large scale procurement program. And we see red tape really stymieing the 100 megawatt reform. So that hasn't really crossed the line. There is a lot of behind the scenes progress and a lot of activity, especially from the miners in getting their projects ready, but we haven't seen the, the projects coming on and that red tape still stands in the way and it really relates to the registration system at NURSA and the, the requirement to have a P, uh, watertight PPAs, power purchase agreements with that registration, which I think there may be some give coming along, along the way, but it, there hasn't been that give yet, so these projects remain in bottleneck situation. So we need to get more uh, energy and capacity onto the grid and we see some progress around the battery energy storage but that has been slow but so th there's this whole pent-up demand and without that uh, we'll pent up demand for supply <laughs> and without this new supply we're going to continue uh, facing this very difficult uh, sort of load shedding prognosis but beyond the backlog we have to retire 22 gigawatts of coal by the middle of next decade. And we are in no way building at the pace and scale that is necessary to cover that gap. So we have an existing gap and we've got a looming massive gap that's coming. We have to get our act together on the procurement side. We have to get our act together on the market structure side so that we can start ensuring that these investments are happening at the pace and scale that is needed, not only to close the legacy gap, to, but to deal with this looming shortfall that is just about to hit the country. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.